already broke the engine in. I didn't have really much time to record it. I, I did run it for about 30 minutes at 3,000 RPMs. And the reason why I didn't videotape it was because I was so focused on making sure the engine was being broken in properly and that the oil pressure was good, the temperature was good, there was no leaks, you know. This is, you know, the first it's 30 minutes, you know, is very critical on an engine that's just freshly rebuilt, you know, new cam, crank, rods, pistons, you name it. So it's so it's very, very critical to make sure you, you know, check your, uh, your oil pressure, your uh, temperature, make sure there's no leaks. Um, if you have like a little tiny leak, you know, just make sure it doesn't leak onto a header or something because before you know it, the thing's on fire. Um, definitely make sure you have enough fuel because in 30 minutes of running it, it can burn quite a bit of fuel. It is 350, it's got 202 aluminum heads, it's got a complete Eagle rotating assembly, it's got stock compression, it's got full roller rockers, it's going to be switched over to fuel injected eventually. It's a four bolt main. It's you know it's a it's a pretty affordable re, uh, rebuild for sure. I'm just going to show you a clip of it running after I did get it done breaking in. The biggest thing is is when you break an engine in, is you want to make sure it's at top dead center. And how you do that is you pull number one spark plug out on the driver's side, and then you stick your finger over the hole and you crank it over. And you make sure you dis disconnect the distributor so it won't fire. So you crank it over and enough pressure will blow your finger off that hole. And when it does that, you know it's close to the top dead center. So then you go over to your harmonic balancer and there should be a line uh, drilled into the side of it. I usually take a white marker and so you can see it better. Uh, rotate the engine backwards to about zero degrees. And then you go over to the distributor cap and you pull it off and you see where the arm's pointing at. And that arm has to point at number one. So you adjust that, you know, you can un undo the bolt, loosen up the distributor, pull it out, and you can turn it all the way back to number one if you're 180 degrees off. So you turn it and then you gotta make sure your, your pump shaft slides back into the bottom of the distributor and it should fall all the way down flush. What I do is I, I just I fill up the fuel bowls on the carb and then I uh, I adjust the high idle on it. Usually I pull the spring off because I can't put it at 3,000 RPMs on some carbs. So I pull the spring off that's around that uh, adjusting screw and then I'll screw it in about four turns, full full turn. And then I'll start it up and then I'll check my RPMs and if I have to idle it down to 3,000 I will. But once it's at 3,000 I run mine for about 30 minutes at 3,000 RPMs. Um, you don't have to do the full 30 minutes. I kind of broke it up just a little bit, just in two pieces, but that, that's perfectly fine as long as once you fire it up, it's, it's at right at 3,000 instantly. Is to use a timing light. Once you fire it up and it's at 3,000 RPMs, and make sure you have your uh, distributor advance disconnected. And what you do is you check where the timing is, and you want to get that timing corrected because uh, if it's off, it's not going to run well. It's, gonna, it's probably going to sound boggy, or it's too advanced, or it's too retarded. You want to you want to find that good spot because you, the headers will actually get really, really, really hot. I mean, they'll start glowing if you don't have the timing properly. So it keeps the engine a lot cooler when it's actually optimized correctly on the timing. Other than that, here's a video of after it was broken in. It was me just adjusting the carburetor a little bit and just revving it up and make sure everything sounded good. Uh, I did notice I had a small uh, valve cover leak. I used uh, cork gaskets, which I really don't like to use, but those valve covers are not going to stay on that engine. A different valve cover setup most likely is going to go on it. I just had those laying around, so I just threw those on there for now. So, watch this clip and enjoy.
subscribe. Thanks.